so I'm sitting here in a shopping centre car park. It's taken me about 10 minutes to get a park and my baby's asleep. It's just me and the baby today. And I was thinking about all that we've done this last month and, and wondering where you're at. We've been doing Kindness Advent. We've been working through Serenity now. And totally my world has been calling me into applying this stuff and I wonder how you're finding yourself, your spaciousness or lack of, your energy or lack of, your focus or lack of, as we head into the craziness. When I get home, my in-laws are going to be about to arrive and they're staying for a week. So we've been cleaning madly this morning. Yesterday in the heat of Melbourne, I probably had my most difficult day with my three-year-old ever. So what resulted last night was a big debrief with my husband about how we're going to work, how we're going to approach today with her and, and what we can work on in terms of connection with her, knowing that there's so much shifting for her with our in-laws coming and the first Christmas she can really understand. And it got me thinking about all of the other dynamics that you might be dealing with and what feels hard right now. And if there's something that does feel hard right now, what is it? And how can we potentially help you get a little reframe, get a little spaciousness? Because I was certainly drawing on a lot of our tools yesterday to work through my edges. And what resulted was some beautiful conversations and some more anchoring into what I want to take into this time. And some more discussions with my husband around what our expectations are of ourselves and of our children having people come into our home. And it was really um, bringing to light just how important those conversations are around how you're each expecting each other to show up and also what your, um, I suppose, ground rules are for yourselves and for your kids if there are any on having people in your home. And for us it was really, as he said, look, you know, our house is our kids, you know, and, and that we're not going to shift and change that because we've got people staying. But we also want to make it inviting and so that's what I was doing this morning with getting their room ready and and I thought yeah like we can do both this can be a really inviting space at the same time as us really celebrating that this is not going to be your picture perfect house this is going to be the house where the kids toys are kind of everywhere and yeah we'll have moments of cleaning up but we're not gonna get fussy about it and yeah like my kids are still learning what it's like to have table manners and that's an ongoing process that we're not going to you know hold any kind of shame around or you know subordinate to kind of old fashioned ideas around how kids should behave at the table because certainly one of that point in particular was one that we emphasized a lot in our serenity now toolkit looking at kids and how kids regulate and very often if we've got big stories ourselves around being at the table and you know you need to sit still and eat your dinner and like not don't chew don't talk with your mouth open with food for example if those are big stories for you then when you're sitting at the table at dinner time that's really going to you're going to feel that and you're going to want to project out onto your children to um, get them to kind of toe this line that you've unconsciously got for yourself around manners at the table and and you know it's a really big one it's a really entrenched one and you'll, you'll notice a lot of it when um when you have in-laws coming or when you have older generations perhaps who have been really trained into that behaving modality at the table um i try to uh, create a culture where we can have conversation at the table and it's a really healthy environment um, but i also recognize that that my kids really need to regulate so for my son it might look like having a few bites to eat and then you know, getting off his chair and moving a bit. And for my three-year-old, she's almost constantly needing to move. And that's really purposeful for them and that's really functional for them. And so for me, it's really conscious practice to not shame that and to not try to get them to follow rules around eating. Because for young children, they need to move their bodies in order to regulate and be grounded in their environment. And until we understand that, it can look like not listening or it can look like what we would want to what other generations might call misbehavior or what mainstream parenting might call misbehavior but these are children who are trying to get in their bodies and we want to facilitate that and we want to say keep that connection going so that's a really good practice for being aware of um, if you're noticing in yourself that anxiety coming up or that frustration at them moving it it's good to ask yourself you know, what's the purpose here why why could they be doing this if all behavior is functional what is this for 
how can I bring curiosity and then some connection and then some behavior modification if it's needed not knee-jerk reacting in order to get what you want because that will forge disconnection and then likely more difficult behaviors can result as as a function of the child trying to work through what was traumatic for them in their perception around your interaction with them or someone else's interaction with them who didn't like their behavior and this stuff really heightens at this time of year i really see it um, in my kids and in other kids um, it's certainly the pressure of, of conforming or the pressure of needing to keep up with what expectations are and that that, that can look like really erratic behavior and sometimes really challenging behavior so if you're finding yourself in that space man like get the surrender now toolkit like either get it in soul driven motherhood or get it by downloadable bundle because it is all of the concepts that we talk around around regulation across the podcast and other programs distilled down into four super duper punchy teachings which are regulation tools for your kids so and regulation tools for your partner so noticing where you're feeling really challenged with them and triggered and how you can work with that and enter that rather than you know pat and react and then and then triggers with your in-laws and also parents so the really key ones that show up this this time of year and then how to work with those in a really embodied way um, and we've got some really great examples of what they can look like and, and how to really open up to the love that's there because so often with parents and in-laws we can get to have a really polarized view around what love, love looks like and what how we want them to show up with our children um, and when we have a, a polarized view or a really idealized view of what we think it should look like we can really miss how they're showing their love and how they're actually you know gifting our children with you know what I like to call you know this kaleidoscope of experience and and and, they, and our children really do benefit from that it's just that in in our wounded place or in our um, often self-righteous place where we say love should look like this or connection should look, look like that or you know respect looks like this we can miss how it's actually already there but we're not able to see it because we've got our own parts that are seeking to be grown up or examined and so we give some great examples of what that looks like in that toolkit. So if you want to get it, hop on. And if you're, you know, struggling right now, I'd love to hear what, what, where it's at and what we can maybe unpack for you. We've been doing a bit, a bit of that in, in various places, both in the podcast and in our groups. So if there's something here live that you want to tease out with us, I'm sure Jules will drop on, drop on here too amid the crazy and do that with you because I really feel the edges that this time of year takes us to. It's beautiful and it's magical and it's amazing and I love it, but I also see how it, as mothers it asks us to really stretch and expand and meet more and that can look really exhausting sometimes and it can look really challenging sometimes and sometimes we feel we want to just check out and I also want to give you permission to do that in whichever way it looks good for you like for me last night it was having a nap you know maybe it is going and you know this morning it was having a dance or whatever you need to come back into yourself to meet what's being asked of you this time of year is totally okay and you take what you need so I'm gonna head on into the shopping center I think Pearl has woken up so we are going to brave the shops and get on with our day have a great Saturday.